Hi, my name's Lorraine Brown. Thanks for joining me. I'm a watercolour artist in South Australia, um, Adelaide, South Australia, and I enjoy painting lots of subjects, but uh, a lot of florals, birds, animals, and uh, I use a variety of techniques. There's so many different ways to paint in watercolour. I like to keep it interesting and mix it up. I don't always paint the same way for um, my subjects so that I can keep it varied and interesting for me. So today I'm going to be painting from this beautiful vase of red um, Christmas gladioli. So let's see how we go. I'm going to use some new colours today because when I paint uh, in watercolour as frequently as I do, I have to find ways of keeping it interesting for me. So I'm always looking for um, different colour combinations, um, colours that maybe I haven't used before or um, brand new ones or ones that I haven't used for a long time. And I've recently been experimenting with some Holbein paints and I've just received a few new colours and I'd like to put those through the paces today. So I'm going to do a little bit of practice with some swatching uh, of the colours here so that I've already made my choices before I get going with the painting. That way then if I've made any really bad ones, I can leave those out. Because I don't have these new colours in my palette, I've got a plastic um, uh, platter, clear plastic platter um, thing here that fits quite nicely over my palette so I can squeeze my new colours out on here. That way if I'm painting and I really do want to get a little bit of a colour that I traditionally use, I can just lift it off and I can get the colour from there. I've squeezed a wee bit of paint out from each of these um, six tubes. I'm not sure about the others that I've got here, how they're going to fit in. So I'm just going to have a little play with these on this scrap piece of paper and just see what it is I can get. With the gladiolas that I'm painting today being red, they've still got a bit of a glow through them where the light is shining through. And I just don't want to have just flat red looking flowers. So I need several shades, I think, of the red and some interesting green. So I'm going to see how I go with a little bit of play here. So a little bit of yellow down, just to give a wee bit of glow underneath. I have used a watercolour pencil here, which is, uh, I was testing that out as well because I've just bought a few new watercolour pencils and that's messed up that yellow underneath there a bit. So that was Oriolin. So I'll pop a little swatch of that there. Let's try, let's try a couple of these uh, reds in there. Now I thought that this Pyrrole red was more orange than the cadmium red light, but when I've squeezed them out onto this palette here, it's actually the reverse. Let's just see if we put a wee bit of this down. So that is the Pyrrole red on there. Cadmium red light there, which I thought when you look at the tubes of these, this is why it can always be a bit deceiving and you have to do your own swatches. Let's see if you can have a look at this. But the Pyrrole Red, to me, looks in the tube warmer and more orange than the Cadmium Red Light. But when I put them down here, it's actually the reverse. So this is the Pyrrole Red. And this is the Cadmium Red Light which is decidedly more orange, making it warmer to me than that one. So it's best never just to take the colour on the tube as gospel. It's best just to do a little bit of um, testing yourself. So this is putting, and I can see that when I put the cadmium red light in here, it goes very orange. But that may well be okay where I can see the light shining through and perhaps go for the Pyrrole orange. Or even a little combination. When you do these little colour swatches here to work your colours out, it's so much fun. You see the paint 
moving around. You're not sort of being overly fussy with it because you realize it's really only just testing out colors. But sometimes I wish my paintings were this loose and free instead of getting to the painting stage and tightening up. Um, but I think these colors will do it. And as I say, I really do want to have a little practice with these and it's all right doing all of this type of practicing, just doing little studies and things, but at some stage or other, you do have to put new supplies through their paces to see what it is you, you get. So that would, would work perfectly all right. If they're not the exact color of my gladiola, it doesn't matter as long as I get something um, interesting for the painting. Now, as far as the greens are going to go, I've squeezed, I don't very often use just a straight tube green. They've always seemed to need something added to it. This is a color called shadow, oh, sorry, green gray. So it's on the darker side here. Um, could easily mix well, I would think, with that yellow. So if I take a little bit of the yellow, and put a bit of this green with it. I'll have a look and see what it is that happens. Some little opaque, so um, I would have to be mindful of using it a little bit watery. And then of course, I always see these uh, gladioli stems having a fair bit of cool looking green. Uh, so adding blue. Could well do that. Keep it all looking a bit interesting. What would that look like just with the blue and the yellow? Is it going to do it? I think that could look quite good. So I think I've got enough variety for the um, green stems and leaves and where they have the buds that come out from them of course they um, then get the red on them as well so I have to find a way of not ending up with mud because when you mix color opposites like reds and greens you are going to get a bit of mud so I'm gonna to have to give some thought as to my whether I'm going to have to paint on dry for one part so that the colors don't mix. But I think for color swatching, I think I'm happy with that. I reckon I can get what I want. The little stamen bits in the middle here may well use masking fluid or, yeah, they're just such tiny little dots, whether you could just keep enough uh, light on the paper to be able to get that color in afterwards. Problem is, when you use, um, you're trying to go around an area, you won't do loose washes because you're mindful of trying to keep an area um, free to do the um, stamens. So I'll just see how I go. So what I'm going to do, I think I could certainly make it up out of these colours and there's that blue that I put in and Holbein call this ultramarine light and one other color that I did squeeze out here is Indian red I've never used Indian red in my life I don't think and so I fancy trying something different it's very much a burnt sienna looking color but maybe if that were to be mixed with the red this pyrrole red you could get the really dark tinges to the edge of some of these petals or even the little shadowy bits in there I think that could do that I've uh, I think I could do this. So I'm going to use that as well. So I'll rock quickly write the uh, names against these here in case you want to uh, consider 
these colors if the painting works out. Then I'm going to be painting on a half sheet and it's Saunders Waterford 425 GSM, which is my preferred one because I don't have to uh, stretch it and it stays reasonably flat. I'm going to use just the regular color, which is this sort of um, creamy color because there's no white in these flowers, so it doesn't really matter about uh, the paper. With these color choices here, I'm not going to do it in the vase. I'm going to do it just as a um, um, loose floral. So they're sort of growing. And I'm not going to talk while I do this particular video. I'm just going to have some fun and see if I can turn these paints uh, into a painting. So I'll um, just clean up here and get everything ready and then I'll get straight into my painting. So I have my half sheet taped up on my board just with regular masking tape. I have some extra paint squeezed out on my palette and changed my water so I'm sort of ready to go. I'm going to think about a little bit of composition on this before I start painting rather than just paint um, without any drawing simply because I have got red and green to mix together and I obviously do want to end up with some red flowers and not just totally um, greyed down flowers. So I'm going to quickly just make up a little composition, um, start the painting and if I've got something I can stop and talk to you I'll get back and um, do some talking but if not this will be a demo of just watching how maybe I can pull all of this together. So I've done a quick sketch, probably a lot more drawing than I might usually do for flowers. However, when you're painting and you're doing a video too, sometimes it's good to have a few guidelines. People can see where you're going. Other times it's simply because it suits the type of painting I'm doing. And as I said, because these have got um, red and green mixed together, I want to find a way of making sure I keep um, my colours separate. I'm going to use a wee bit of masking fluid here. I've dipped a tiny brush into some soap and I just want to put a couple of little strokes. I'm looking over to where I've just placed this vase of gladioli and I just want to put a couple of um, um, marks down, hopefully in the right spot here, just that I'll be able to turn into some yellow stamens. We don't have too much showing anyway. So a tiny bit there. Um, let's see, this one I've done, I've done another open one over here so that could perhaps have a little bit of retained white of the paper when I put the red down so that I can put some yellow in there. Um, I'm going to actually be doing a bit of a yellow underpainting on these anyway. I could have painted the yellow, then masked out. Um, that would have been another way of doing it, but uh, I hadn't thought about that until I was speaking, so I'll have to do it this way. So I've got a few in there, a few in there. I'm just wondering if I could just creep a couple of little marks here and there. And you could always turn them into red afterwards if they don't suit where you've put them. But if you don't put something down in the first place, you haven't got that option of saving the white of the paper. So that's just uh, all the masking I'm going to do. So by the time I've cleaned off my brush, um, that will be dry and I can start painting.
having put the first wash of colour down on this painting. I must admit it looks a little bit uh, psychedelic. There's a lot of colour going on in here. Um, and this is at the stage where your painting generally look their ugliest. Um, we hope they don't look their ugliest at the end, but definitely at this stage here after the first wash, where you're just finding your way, covering up anything you don't want to be left as white paper, things do look a bit ugly. There's a lot of colour has gone down the bottom here and you can see in places where it's got a bit muddy, where reds have hit greens. However, I'm hopeful of this uh, being a darker bottom to the painting, you know, grounding the flowers in and keeping the light up the top here. It is the plan. So I'm hopeful that I'm going to be able to change some of this um, murky looking bottom area here into just what I need. I've tried to paint around the actual flowers that have got to be uh, a bright colour. I've even lost my way a little bit with the drawing, but once it's dry, I can refine my way because I'll then be painting on dry paper and the paint is not going to go everywhere. So I'm going to take the time now for that to dry, clean up things here and then um, start on the flowers and hopefully pull the background together. My first wash, background wash, is all dry. <clears throat> and as you know, watercolour does dry um, about 20% lighter um, than when you see it first go on the paper. Also, uh, I wet um, around the flower, so there was a little bit of water on the paper as well, so that would have diluted the pigment again. But now I have it all dry, I'm going to carry on with the painting on dry paper. I have more control. The paint is going to stay where I put it, which means I'll have to use soft, um, clean brush to move it around. But I'll have more control on the flowers. When I've got some flowers down on here, I will start thinking about what I'm going to do with the background to try and pull that together. There's a lot of thinking and painting at the same time with this type of procedure. You're not copying a photo. You're actually looking at, um, um, you know, a live bunch of flowers here for your inspiration, trying to turn it into a painting. And sometimes you've just got to find a way little bit by little bit to do it. But that's the fun of painting in this, this way. I love doing this. They are not all masterpieces at the end. Some come out better than others. Uh, but you learn a lot while you're doing them. And of course, you have to make a lot of decisions, which is, uh, um, you know, part of the fun. So I'm going to paint on dry paper now, variety of brushes, um, you know, some mops, um, rounds, anything to help me get the, um, uh, the job done. With my little swatch that I started off with, I put some yellow down for the flower and I'm going to do the same on here. And I'm going to try and start with a flower that's not quite so important, maybe this little one up here to find my way so that perhaps by the time I get down to these feature flowers down the bottom, I may be a little bit more proficient at doing them. So let's see how we go. I'll just put this on a little bit of um, uh, probably speed painting because this part of the work might take me a little while. You can uh, put it on faster if you like, or you can watch it at the speed that I've set it. And uh, I'll get back to you when I've got something to say.
push this painting as far as I think I can go and quite happy with the focus of the flowers in the middle and decorated the background and indicated more going on uh, with more gladiolis um, in the distance. So the only thing I have to do now is take off the masking fluid and just paint those little centers. And providing your painting is dry, it's okay to rub this off. It's a little bit wet in other places, but not on the flowers. So I just take the masking fluid off. And as always, you have some sharp marks where it's gone down. And you've got to sort of add the color that you want, but soften the hard lines that have been left behind. So doing this probably with a small brush for this, and I rather would rather have used a slightly warmer yellow than the Oriolin that was on here. So I'm just going to dip into this palette underneath my colors that I have been using. So this is out of my regular palette. This is a much warmer yellow, sort of like a cadmium yellow. I think this is a Da Vinci paint. Um, and I'm going to just do these little centers. Actually, on closer inspection, they're actually white. Um, or really, just a very pale yellow. So here's a bit of a lemon yellow. I guess I could have used the Oriolin in the end. Um, and I'll just make these a wee bit smaller. On the Gladiola bunch that I've got, you could hardly see these. They were sort of hidden inside the flower. Um, just this one up here has to be just fixed up because it doesn't make sense going over the bottom of the flower there. Looks better. And I think that might be enough colour. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. So, one bunch of red gladioli. So that was some fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to call that done. So hope you've enjoyed seeing how I go about making something up from, yes, from life, but making up a lot of it as I go along, having some fun, testing out the new colors, um, basically sticking to that palette really. Um, and yes, I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. So thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.